So would you please stand as we sing our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holiness, uh, hymn number two in your hymnal. Son and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Please join me as we pray together our prayer for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Let's continue to worship and praise the Lord. We're going to sing O Happy Day today. I'm pretty sure you know this when we sang it many, many times ago, but it's been a while, so I thought this would be a great one for today, because it's a happy day that we're back in church. Oh. 
Thank you, Lord. Lord, right now we pray that your glory would rise up in our hearts, that you would just overwhelm us and overcome us by your presence. We pray for those who are at home today who aren't able to be here with us, that your glory would shine uh, right where they are, the glory of the Lord would just shine upon their faces and lift up their countenance, Lord, that they would have hope and the love and the presence of God surrounding them this day with us. We thank you, Lord, for this new day. We thank you, Lord, that with all the changes going on, one thing remains the same, and that is you. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and your kingdom will never be shaken. And so, Lord, we fix our eyes upon you, the author and perfecter of our faith. We stand on the holy ground of the kingdom, and we won't be moved. Come what may, Lord, we will stand solid on the rock, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we thank you for this opportunity to be together after all this time. Lord, we thank you for this day, the day that you've made. Come, Holy Spirit, just rise up, fill us, baptize us, energize us, change us in Jesus' name. And I'd like to invite you to join me now in praying our prayer for today. It's found in your bulletin there. So would you join me in praying? O oh Lord, from whom all good proceeds, grant us the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may always think those things that are good, and by your merciful guidance may accomplish the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we have the reading of God's Holy Word. The Old Testament reading is from Psalm 92. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. How great are your works, O Lord! How profound your thoughts! The senseless man does not know, fools do not understand, that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be forever destroyed. But you, O Lord, are exalted forever. For surely your enemies, O Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. They have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured upon me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will still stay fresh and green, proclaiming, the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from the book of the second Epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Now we know if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal 
may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on its stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And even more, whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. Though he does not know how, all by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, and then the full kernel in the head. As soon as a grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, back in March, I have to tell you, the strangest thing happened to me. I was watching the news one night and I heard the doorbell ring. And I got up and I answered the doorbell and there at the door was a six foot tall mosquito. (laughs) He grabbed me by the neck, threw me across the room, called me a name and buzzed off. I was shocked. A month later I was reading a book and the doorbell rang. I answered the door and that same six foot mosquito was standing there. Before I could do anything, he punched me in the stomach thumped me on the head and left. Then, just this past week, I was fixing myself a sandwich in the kitchen and I heard what I thought was a knock at the door. So I went and wasn't quite sure. So I kind of looked out the window of the door and didn't see anybody. So I cautiously opened the door and stuck my head around the corner and there was the same six foot tall mosquito who pushed the door open, grabbed me by the neck, threw me across the room in a body slam, punched both eyes, punched me in the nose, called me a name and buzzed off. Well, I was quite sore and so I went to the doctor and said, doctor, you know, here's what's been happening to me these past three months. What should I do? 
He said, well, there's not much you can do. There's just a nasty bug going around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, there's not a nasty bug, but a nasty virus that's been going around. For three months now, it seems that we've been derailed, dislodged, dislocated, frustrated. And I think everybody's kind of getting to the end of themselves and they're ready to kind of get on with things. But we know that there is something going on and so we just have to try to read the signs and listen to those who really do know and try to do our part and try to get back to living life. And um, I think if, if we were just to take a few moments this morning um, to reflect on the lessons, I want to say that they, they might remind us of some important things, a couple important things. So maybe the title of my sermon is Show and So, because that's what the Lord seems to be teaching his disciples this morning, and as we listen to his words in Mark's gospel, I think they're good words. They remind us that the work of the Lord is not stopped, and we're called to show it, and we're called to sow into it. And I love what the psalm, uh, Psalm 92, said that even in old age, those who have... Uh, with those who are the planting of the Lord, those who have been born again, you know, this, this new life springs up to fruitfulness even in old age, in season, out of season. And that's the kind of thing that will help the world to take notice of us. But in some ways we've been hidden away. Maybe we've, part of it's been because of this uh, season that we've been, the pandemic, it's, we, we thought a two week period would end, turn into three months. But hopefully you've been still keeping your eyes on the Lord. You've been showing his light and sowing his seed, even in the challenging time that we're in. If you, if you think about the context, I don't understand why the, uh, the lectionary just has a start in the middle of Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, but uh, just preceding this uh, lesson that I read out of Mark, uh, Jesus is given what we have come to know as the parable of the sower, or some call it the parable of the seed, or some call it the parable of the soil. But Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God, and he's talking about how um, the sower, it's almost like the sower just sows indiscriminately this seed of the gospel. And some of it falls on the path, some of it falls on rocky soil, some of it falls um, among thorns, and some lands in good soil. And depending upon where it lands, and says something about what happens to that seed as it takes root. So the birds come and take it off the path, uh, the rocks, you know, the, the plant springs up quickly, but has no root, and then it withers. Others, among the thorns, the thorns choke out the life that even begins to grow, but that which lands on the good soil springs up to eternal life. And fruitfulness, it has uh, an amazing capacity to produce from itself 30, 60, 100-fold and that really is a description of the gospel. But then Jesus interjects his talk about the, the, he uses a parable to talk about the different conditions that cause people to receive the gospel or not to receive the gospel. And that's all out of our control. You know, it seems like the sower just sows indiscriminately, but God is the sower and he chooses us to, to do his work, but he sows through us. We don't have the luxury of knowing what's gonna happen to that seed of the gospel that we sow, but we know that God is sovereign and nothing takes him by surprise. But right in the middle of this lesson, Jesus also then 
um, says to his disciples, listen, he talks about light. If you, if you have a light, you bring it into the house, you don't put that light under a basket or you don't put it under a bed. You put it on a stand so that it shines light and illumines what's in the room. And back in that day, um, I understand that the lamp was a little ceramic kind of bowl, maybe it crimped at a couple ends with oil in it and then a floating wick. And that little lamp would be lit and it would illumine a room. So you would never bring a lamp into the house. You never go to the store and buy a lamp and then put a, uh, something over the top of it, would you? you? You buy a lamp so that it shines the light. Well, in gospel terms, God is, throughout scripture, is referred to as the light, and so is the law, or the scriptures are the light. Jesus said of himself, I am the light of the world. You know, he is the light. He is the word. And what he's saying is, I didn't come into this world to be hidden by anything. I came to be revealed. And the same as when Jesus spoke these words and throughout the ages of the church life, we've been mandated to show forth the light of Christ. We're not to hide the light. And you know, the kinds of things that hide the light are varied. It could be the sin in our life that we still hold on to. It could be fear of man. It could be um, that we feel um, ashamed to speak up in a culture where uh, the light is shunned. But the mandate is clear. Jesus said, I came to shine forth, and I came to shine forth through you. He talked about the measure that you use will be measured to you. Everything that's hidden will be revealed. So the light, when the light turns on, you see what is there. I remember one time when I was uh, in high school, my room was such a mess that, you know, one time I came into the room forgetting what was on the floor. It was dark, and I tripped over uh, something that was in the way that I forgot that I put there earlier. The room was dark. You know, that's what we hate to walk around in a dark room. So that's why we turn on the light to see what is there. But in a spiritual way, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The darkness cannot overcome me. And I'm calling you to be children of the light. I'm calling you to be like lamps that are, you put, put yourself out there to be seen. I want you to show my light through your words and your actions. Let your light shine before the world that they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. The light shines and it's gonna reveal every hidden thing. So whether everything is seen in today's world, we're, we're frustrated by the darkness that seems to be encroaching. But uh, Henry Black could be said in Experiencing God, when the darkness gets darker, the light shines brighter. Jesus said, I'm not to be eclipsed. I'm calling you to be my light bearers. It's gonna, it's gonna take great courage, courage and faith of the Lord to walk by faith, not by sight to shine the light in a dark time. And we're gonna be made to feel like we can't speak up the truth of the Lord. But this is where the other part of what Jesus had to say, I think, comes into play. He says, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who just went out and sowed the seed. It's an amazing thing what happens. He says, the kingdom of God is like a man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces corn, first the stalk, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. As soon as the corn is ripe, he puts the sickle to it. The harvest has come. The kingdom um, growth is a... It's an amazing process. It's a, it's a mystery, it's organic, and yet God allows us to participate in the sowing. 
The hard part is we don't always see what happens to the seed. But he promises that if we don't worry about the seed, we just sow where he tells us to sow. He will take care of the growth. It's an amazing thing. Sometimes evangelism has been made into more manipulation and getting people to do and to say and to pray in certain ways. But it's like that soil. We don't know what kind of soil the, the, the word is landing into. It may look like there's something going on around the people that we're sharing the gospel with and they have such great joy in the beginning, but then they fizzle out and go away. Could be that when the seed lands, it lands on rocky hearts, stony hearts. It could land on uh, in the hearts where people are choked out by the worries and concerns of this world. But all we're called to do is not to worry about the soil. We can't do anything about the soil. All we can do is sow the seed and trust the sower, which is God. But he promises that if we do what we're called to do, some sow, some water, and we even get to reap a harvest. That's the amazing thing. The gospel movement, the kingdom growth, is an amazing thing that has nothing to do with us and everything to do with us in obedience to the Lord. It's a mystery how a heart changes. You know, even people can't get their hearts right except the Lord does a work in hearts. So we don't know why some receive the seed and some don't, but we know that God's word, the seed, when it goes out, will accomplish the purposes for which it was sent. That's what it says in, in Isaiah chapter 55. Let me just read that uh, real quick. Isaiah 55 tells us that God's word is powerful, and so is a seed. You don't think of a little seed being powerful, but the seed, when it does its thing, is packed with power and growth potential, and it produces what God intends for it to produce. But in Isaiah chapter 55, he says, um, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace and the mountains and the hills will, will burst into song before you and the trees of the field will clap their hands. And there's more there. But I, I love that because all we're called to do is sow the seed where the Lord tells us to sow it. Whether we think it's going to do something or not, God sees and he knows what he's doing. It will accomplish his purposes. Even when it falls on the, the places where it doesn't take root, there's a purpose in God's economy for what he's doing. Just think. God does the work. He just gives us something to do. He's planted us in a field, and, and now we're coming out of hiding, so to speak, of not even hiding, but just we've come out of this. Uh, we're, we're in the spring season where life is calling us forth. People are calling. The, people want true, true light, and the only true light is in uh, through Jesus Christ in the face of his children of the light, which is what we are called to be. We're called to be sowers, and we're called to trust him. Not too long ago, and I'll, I'll just uh, share this, we, we had our lawn redone. After 20 years of my landscaping abilities, it looked like a disaster. We decided to have the professionals come, so they stripped it all back, took out all my uh, shrubs and stuff, and put in some new... Uh, things, but the grass, our our ground looked better than it did just dirt. <laughs> and but the they they told me I needed to water it morning and night. That's all I did. They sowed the seed, they put it in the ground, put the straw over it. All I had to do was go out and water it. 
And so every day I'd go out and water it morning, night. I didn't, I looked, trying to see the grass growing, didn't see it. And then one day, all of a sudden, the grass sprouted through. It was a, it was a great day. And then when I kept watering it, every morning more would be there. But, but if I tried to watch that grass grow, I wouldn't have seen it happen. All I got to see was the result of that seed and little maintenance, but the seed did what it was called to do. We sow where the Lord calls us to sow. Sometimes growth is hard to see, but sometimes it comes back to bless us. And so maybe you've been blessed by somebody who's come back to you years later to say, thank you for sharing the word of the Lord with me because it changed my life. And you think, wow, I don't remember saying that. What we say and do by God's command has the power like a seed to yield a flourishing crop 30, 60, 100 fold. All we're called to do is to be obedient to the Lord in being his servants. So I want to encourage us to get back out there to, to show the light and to sow the seed. And I think we can talk more about that because we're in that season where we need to, to be about God's work no matter what's going on. Nothing has changed. There's not a new normal in the kingdom. Kingdom is normal. That's why we walk by faith, not by sight. So let's pray that the Lord would just help us to get back to showing the light and sowing the seed and letting him do the work. So, Father, we thank you for the mystery of the gospel seed, that as we yield to you, the sower, and we do what you tell us to do, whether it's to sow, water, or reap a harvest, Lord, we thank you that you do the work. It's a mystery to us, but we know that you're at work. Lord, use us to change this world for good by showing the light of Christ in what we say and do and sowing your seed to your glory that at the end there would be a harvest that would be celebrated in heaven for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened, he opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, he was at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Lord, send your Holy Spirit now that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven as we say together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, 
Let us now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia! And this is a reminder that these are the gifts of God for you and me, the people of God. And we take them in remembrance that Christ died for us, and we feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. I also like to pray a prayer for spiritual communion. Some may not have access to communion like we have this morning, but if they watch this, we want them to participate with us through something called spiritual communion. So would you just join your heart with mine as I offer this prayer. Dear Jesus, let's pray together. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire to possess you within our souls. And if I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, The blood of Christ, a cup of salvation. Amen. Please be seated. All right. If you'll just peel the top part, you can get to the bread. And when you're done with receiving the bread and the juice, put the container just in that little holder in front of you. But the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Please stand and let's pray together a prayer of thanksgiving. Praying together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. And so we won't have any song on the way out, um, but you can dance your way down the aisle. Um, <laughs> And go outside if you want to just socialize as you feel you're able to. Greet one another. But as we go, go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit to show the light of Christ and to sow the seed of the gospel as the Lord would direct you to do in Jesus' name. Go in peace. Amen.